Tunisia, some things don't change. The ancient architecture in the old Arab market, where male-only cafes are common. Where hand craftsmanship is honed over generations, so are habits. Certain long-standing traditional values that discriminate against women and leave them at risk. Tunisia passed a pioneering law, a first in the Arab world, to protect women against domestic violence. Enforcement is the problem. This Saturday morning workshop is organized by Canadian media development organization Journalists for Human Rights, supported by Global Affairs Canada in partnership with other democracy projects. Because schools is another, it's that part, that's family, this is institutions and that's school. The goal here is to empower women to understand and use the law. In Tunisia, women have so many rights and so many laws that are with us and for us. It's just the law people, like the people that are supposed to be on our side, like, I don't know, policemen, uh, judges and even lawyers sometimes they they're like no stop it don't do that you're gonna break up your family or don't do that you're gonna bring shame to your family changing attitudes can be a greater challenge than changing laws this one also gives women the right to emergency shelter two hours from the capital this shelter opened in late 2022. Victims of abuse, physical, mental, financial. Of the 40 rooms, only three women and four children are here. For Athelia and her eight-month-old, it's been home for two months. Abandoned by her husband and left penniless. Tunisia's countryside has the highest poverty rate in the country. That makes rural women the most vulnerable and the importance for local journalism even more critical. If no one's reporting on the violence and discrimination they face, a landmark law changes nothing. Across the farm fields of central Tunisia, mostly women do the heavy lifting and the long hours for about $3 a day. Inyes picks potatoes to feed her children. Her husband doesn't work. The law, she says, is on paper, but not in practice. Elizabeth McSheffrey, a JHR trainer, is working with young journalists, brainstorming on getting human rights reporting in their rural community on the air. The education and efforts are slowly paying off. Nadia Salhi is a success story. Forced out of a long-term job, she picked up her passion for sewing. Local reporting on her business brought in more business. Now, Nadia is part of a program to teach schoolgirls how to sew. Everyone has a dream, she says, but no way to realize it. When the girls finish school, they'll now have a trade. Nadia's full circle experience is a small step to counter the disillusioned. This is a country that from a small strip of beach sees the highest number of young people risk their lives to cross the Mediterranean for a different life in Europe. Democracy here is still a dream. Lisa Laflamme, Tunisia.